I got the idea for conference a year ago from a research and practice link officers meeting because somebody was talking about somewhere in the country down south I think I thought hmm we're going to do that in Sheffield so we did it last year and this model is exactly the model that we followed last year so you're seeing what we did last year and it worked very well there was a lot of a, there was good attendance lot of interest and the evaluation was absolutely excellent there was comments like um, social workers saying haven't had any academic input of this standard for the last 10 years or haven't had anything since I trained and it just felt it was very positive and it had a kind of feel-good factor to it and on that basis we decided to go ahead this year. It's lovely to see so many of you. Yep. Um, Penny Page now. What I think is important is to create a culture of learning in an organisation. By that I mean the organisation must encourage its staff to be able to have space to reflect and think about what they're doing in their day to day as well as what they might learn if they looked at what their colleagues were doing elsewhere, gathered a body of evidence that might be around a particular area of work they're working in. And also part of that is that the organisation gives them the tools to do that. I think um, the speakers were excellent and it was very well presented. It was very, very interesting. Helped a lot. It's about looking at what works for children, what works for families, and finding out on the ground evidence so that it can help inform how we develop services in the future for children, especially at this time when everything is changing so remarkably. Now, Sheffield, over the last five years, has been building up its experience in this area. Um, prior to that, we... Uh, we struggled in terms of our technology and resources that were available, but over the last five years we've been able to build up quite a significant um, toolkit for, for staff at all levels in the organisation to enable them to um, learn and, uh, and do the reflective, reflective practice that's, uh, that's required. What we did um, last year was that we developed a strategy around evidence-informed practice and we established an evidence-informed practice project group to take the agenda forward both to initiate activity around an evidence-informed practice but also to promote and support the service, take initiatives forwards as well. We've got very good links with both the local universities because we're lucky in having two, so two universities, Sheffield Hallam, Sheffield University, both of whom have social work departments, both of whom um, we, we offer student placements for. Um, and quite a number of the academics have worked for Sheffield Social Services in the past and are very proud to have done so. We've established a research um, governance panel to make sure that where practitioners are interested in doing research or people want to come from outside and do collaborative research projects with us, that they, there is a standard that we can put the project against, we can measure against, we can make sure there's an ethical base to that research. There's quite a lot of different research projects going on at the moment and what we're trying to do, and increasingly next year it will be a bigger priority for us, as we enhance the social work capacity base, which will create more time for this, is to enable practitioners to do bits of research for themselves. We've gotten us a research associate who helps support that activity. Good morning, research in practice. In addition, Research and Practice has got a local office base at Sheffield University and we're member organisations of Research and Practice, so we have very good links with them and good contacts. We've done a lot of work around establishing the three days reading and reflection time, making sure people understand how to use that time and how to evidence it for re-registration purposes. Um, we've set up a conference budget to help people not just to, there's obviously an in-house tailored training programme, there are post-qualifying awards that people can go, people can access NVQs, but they can also now go on short uh, courses that are provided externally or they can go to conferences. We've developed competency-based job descriptions and we've made sure that the senior practitioner role has evidence-informed practice at its heart and that their, their part of their role is to support, coach, mentor colleagues in their teams to raise practice standards and to use evidence appropriately in practice. I believe evidence-informed practice is crucial and what alternatives are there in a sense. My feeling is that we need to encourage I guess we'd still call it evidence-informed practice, but um, practitioners to think of their own practice as um, a good basis for research. 
and indeed for each piece of work they do is in a sense a single case design study. But one of the difficulties I think we have at the moment is finding ways of properly recording that so that um, practitioners can reflect on it appropriately but also so that information can be uh, available to other people with the proper confidentiality of course. The other main strand is around the participation and in the involvement agenda, the engagement agenda for children and young people because they're a critical source of evidence and we didn't have very well developed mechanisms for either consulting with them or promoting their partic participation in the decisions that impact on their lives through assessment and care planning processes. And so we've done a lot of work around that. We brought in the Total Respect Training Programme and senior managers and mem members of the council actually going through that training programme with young people. We're trying to set, set up a looked after child reference group. Cups of tea? Yeah. yeah. The director has set in a drop-in, she's got a regular drop-in where people can just book in to see her or they can email her or they can phone her. Lots of web page developments that we've involved young people in developing. So there's been a lot of activity around raising the profile of the voice of the child and the young person. There were two barriers for me, or two main barriers. One was around a managerial agenda around compliance and I think what the strength of evidence-informed practice it will have a knock-on for compliance if, you, if you're a good if you're a good practitioner sort of soundly rooted in practice you will be doing your statutory visits regularly managers can get very obsessed by compliance at the cost of quality and I think the, what's important about evidence-informed practice is it actually raises the quality of practice standards so it was trying to get first-line managers and service managers to get their heads above that that parapet, that busy day-to-day -day organisational stretch parapet of we need to get compliance because we need to get beyond that. We actually need to raise practice standards and we need practice rooted in evidence. The principles of uh, evidence-informed practice apply across all professional spheres here. Um, the real issue is what questions are we going to ask as a children's service and how are we going to interact with the practice with people engaged in practice on the ground floor in order to in order to support the exploration of those questions and issues and the you know and, and the development of new knowledge and new ideas and that's very exciting. We are learning by um, the evidence that we see in front of us both in practice and research really so uh, and, and as social work is a lot of what we do we're making individual judgments we need to base those individual judgments on a whole range of criteria so in, for social work it's absolutely critical that we have an evidence base on which to put our judgments and that evidence base will come from a range of things. The debate between quantitative and qualitative approaches is absolutely strong and live in education as, as it is anywhere else um, but in social work there's, a, there's probably a, a greater emphasis on the qualitative uh, side because again because you're working with small dis uh, groups of very specific needs and so on so Again, we need to build and connect these two effectively, and it seems to me that there's a there's a the potential for enormous synergy here, um, as, as long as we approach this in the right way. Obviously, the education world is much bigger; the numbers are much larger. Education is a universal service, and therefore, the focus on large-scale data sets and information and outputs is greater, and that carries with it a greater emphasis on the use of statistical techniques. Have you finished that? Yeah. I think the second main barrier was around time and practitioners saying we haven't got the time to access the internet, we haven't got the time for this research activity, we haven't got the time to do this. Hopefully, because what we've built in our three days reading and reflection time, which isn't a huge amount of time, but I think it's a really important message to say as an organisation, this is important, this is credible activity, this is activity you should be involved with. But we're also building capacity around social work time as well. We're in, we are actually creating more social work posts and we're introducing some more support worker posts. So I think hopefully that those two, those two things coming together with enable practitioners to feel they have actually got the time. I hope that people take away um, some new knowledge
I would really, really um, important that even if people don't hear many of the other messages, they take away some new knowledge with them and it prompts them and excites them to think about some part of their practice or for managers or um, anybody else who's in decision-making positions that they're going to maybe revisit some of the ways in which they make decisions and reconsider how they would, how they would um, what they would look at to help those decision-making processes. So I would want staff to take that away and I would also want staff to take away the idea that they are valued and that we are able to put something on at least one a year, once a year that respects and values their professional identities. So from my point of view I don't think it's a passing fad, no. I think it's definitely here to stay, definitely here to stay in Sheffield anyway. <laughs>